Let's say our brokerage is brand new. The Jones transaction is all they have going and the phone bill comes due. The Jones transaction is only a few days away from closing, but if the phone bill is not paid immediately, the phones will be disconnected. Could the broker borrow money from the Jones earnest money for a few days? Of course, the answer is absolutely no. It is extremely important to make sure clients' funds are safeguarded at all times. Borrowing them, even for a few days, is strictly prohibited and could result in discipline or possibly the loss of the principal broker's license. Let's examine what happens when the Jones transaction closes. The earnest money deposit given by the Jones becomes part of the money they need to bring to the transaction. In principle, the earnest money deposit needs to be sent to the closing, so the Jones are able to close on the transaction. The rules require the broker to maintain an account ledger for each sub-account in the trust account. Let's examine what happens when the Jones earnest money is sent to the title company for closing. Jones account entry. Earnest money deposit 2000 transferred to title company 2000 total 0 real estate trust account brokerage funds 470 jones 0 total $470 while the concept we just discussed is accurate it is not necessarily reflective of what actually happens in real life transferring the earnest money back to the title company for closing may become burdensome and may delay the closing Usually, the transfer is handled more simply. Let's assume the brokerage would be owed $10,000 in commission on the Jones transaction once it closed. Rather than transferring the earnest money deposit, the title company will usually net the earnest money deposit from the commission due to the brokerage holding the earnest money deposit. For our example, once the transaction is closed, the title company would send the brokerage a check for $8,000. Remember, the commission due was $10,000. The title company would expect the brokerage to take the $2,000 it is holding an earnest money deposit to make up the remaining commission. Please note, the brokerage is not authorized to take the earnest money deposit until it receives written authorization from both the buyer and the seller to do so. Usually, this written authorization comes in the form of the settlement statement the parties sign at closing. Once the principal broker receives the settlement statement, the $2,000 being held in the trust account is now the broker's money. The rules require the money to be removed from the trust account as quickly as reasonable. Remember, the broker is only allowed to have $500 of their own money in the trust account. Once the $2,000 becomes the broker's money, they are exceeding the limit. A common practice is to transfer the $2,000 earnest money deposit once it becomes funds of the brokerage and to the brokerage's operating account. The account registers on the following slides illustrate the accounting. Jones account, earnest money deposit, $2,000. Transfer to operations, $2,000. Total, zero. Trust account, brokerage funds, four seventy. dollars Jones, zero. Total, four seventy. dollars Operations account, commission from title company, 8000 transfer from trust, 2000 total $10,000. The sample ledgers we just reviewed are similar to those required by the Division of Real Estate to keep on all trust account transactions. The division does not really care what happens in the operations account, but it is very concerned with the trust accounts. What if part of the $10,000 commission from the Jones transaction was owed to an agent affiliated with the brokerage? For example, Andy agent represented the Jones on the transaction in his owed commission. Could the principal broker pay Andy directly from the trust account? Yes. The manner in which the money comes out of the trust account once it becomes property of the brokerage is irrelevant, as long as the money leaves the trust account as quickly as is reasonable. A payment directly from the trust account to the agent for part of his commission is illustrated in the following account ledgers. Jones account, earnest money deposit, 2000 Check to Andy agent, 2000 Total, zero. Operations account, commission from title company, 8000 Check to Andy agent, 4000 Total, 4000 Please note, Andy's commission was paid to him in two checks, 
one from the trust account, and one from the operations account. The effect on the overall trust account was the same as our previous example, so we did not show the general trust account ledger again. Other disbursements. We have covered the most common and generally most favored type of disbursement. Disbursement upon closing. However, if a transaction fails and does not close for some reason, the disbursement of the earnest money deposit becomes very important and can be quite controversial. The general overriding principle of determining when and to whom earnest money deposits should be dispersed is that you follow whatever the parties have agreed to in writing. In our previous examples, we were dispersing according to the settlement statement, which was a written document agreed to by all parties. 